Hello everyone, welcome to Cornerstone Kids at Home. We have a bunch of fun stuff planned for you this week. You will spend some time worshiping God with music, you will go over your memory verse, and then you get to watch a true story straight from the Bible. But before we get to all that, I want to review our next gen core values. First, love God. I am created to pursue an authentic relationship with my creator. Next, which is number two, love people. I exist every day to demonstrate God's love to a broken world. And finally, love life. I experience life to the fullest as I walk in my God-given identity. If you do these three things every day, I promise you that it will change your life and the lives of those around you. Have a good time today and have a great week. reason why my feet can't stop my heart can't help but sing it's a wonderful feeling to feel your love for me to feel the joy you bring your love is the answer so I sing to you the reason is you Jesus you're why I'm singing out the reason is you Jesus you're what it's all about the cross you set me free and I'm thankful that you love me Whoa. One, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, we know we belong here because of your love for us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. Everybody say, it's time to play. 
Cause us, we know we've been long here Because of your love for us that goes on and on forever Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go You're there, we'll always be together So sing along with me for all the joy he brings It's going down Get in the mix We're not stopping Get in the mix It's me, Graham. Have you ever had any kind of music or video player with surround sound? It's supposed to feel like the sound is all over the room. It literally surrounds you. That's the kind of system I just installed. All that's left to do is give it a little test. That way I'll have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. So let's see if I'm surrounded. I'll just press play here. I can hear it here. I can hear it here. I can hear it here too. And here. And here. Here, 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 here. Whew. Don't look now, but I think we're surrounded. In today's story, you'll hear about something else you're surrounded by. Don't worry, it's a good thing. You know where I'll be. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. When Paul wrote his famous letters to the believers in Rome, he declared an incredible truth. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. That not even angels or demons, not present or future or any other powers can separate us. Not the highest places or the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Now, let's see how this truth might play out in our lives today. Ben Martin stared hard at the page of his book, trying to force the letters to stay in place. Jason stepped through the gate. He br he drew, oh. Tearing off his glasses, Ben hurled them onto the bed, rubbing his aching eyes. His mom's voice floated from downstairs. Everything okay? Yeah, fine. Ben picked up his book again and tried once more to focus. He drew, 
rift. It was useless. Words and letters shifted, traded places with the lines above and below. This is totally impossible. Ben slammed the book down and stalked out of his room and down the stairs. In the kitchen, Mom was making lunch. How's the book? Great, awesome, fantastic. If you're stuck, Mr. Spinelli said that it's okay to- I'm gonna be the only one in sixth grade who hasn't made it through a single book on the summer reading list. Ben, you know this has nothing to do with how smart you are. Ben shoved open the back door without hearing the rest of Mom's pep talk. Tell your brother it's almost time for lunch. Ben found his brother Ty in the backyard. Wow, fence is looking good. Ty was home for a month before his last year of college. He was such a good carpenter that his dad was paying him to build a new backyard fence. <laughs> yeah. Lunch ready? Almost. Ben rode into the hammock strung between two oak trees and stared into the leaves. The shifting lights and shadows reminded him of the jumping letters in his book. He squeezed his eyes shut. You finished Jason's game yet? No, because I'm the world's slowest reader. Uh, not true. It's just the... Uh... Uh, dyslexia, yeah, I know. Ben's parents were finally relieved to have a diagnosis that explains Ben's trouble in school. But for Ben, dyslexia seemed like a giant weight pinning him down. I kept thinking that maybe one day it would just all click into place, that that reading would just happen like it does for everybody else. But now I know it's never going to be easy. Dyslexia makes it take forever to learn. Mm. Lots of people with dyslexia do amazing things. It's easy for you to say you're perfect at everything. Huh. Here, pound a few nails. You'll feel better. Ty held out a hammer and gestured toward a nail sticking out of a newly placed picket. Ben shrugged out of the hammock and took the hammer. Keep your eye right on the nail head. Yeah. Did mom ever tell you I almost dropped out of college first semester freshman year? What? <laughs> no. Yeah. I made some really mm, unwise choices. I was failing classes, and I knew Mom was worried, and Dad was super mad, and I felt completely worthless. Ben forgot about the hammer and gave the tie in amazement. No way. You're the smartest guy I know. Hmm. I was just going to quit, but I had this friend on my hall, Leo, and he wouldn't leave me alone. He just kept telling me that no matter how much of a zero I felt like, I was still loved. By God, that nothing I do and nothing that happens can ever change that. Huh. So that just fixed stuff? <laughs> nope. But Leo kept showing up, and I finally started reading some of the verses he gave me just to get him off my back, and it started to sink in. Ty took out his phone and tapped a few times. Mm. Here's my favorite one. Ty started to hand over his phone, but saw Ben wince. I'll read it. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Ben swapped the hammer from one hand to the other and back again. I think I've heard that before. It's kind of wild with all the angels and demons and stuff. Yeah, it's different when you put yourself in it. I am absolutely sure that no dumb choice or failing grade or feeling worthless now or ever can make God stop loving me. Like fill in the blank. Yeah, sure. Ben took a couple good whacks at the nail until it was pounded firmly in place. So I am, um absolutely certain that dyslexia and feeling worthless and summer reading lists. None of that can make God stop loving you. Now or ever. Yeah. Okay. Somehow, Ben felt a little lighter. What do you think of Jason's game? Oh, it's awesome. Other than the reading part. <laughs> Ty tapped on his phone again. I'm buying you the audiobook. Then you can listen while you read Cool. Thanks. I'm hungry. The two brothers headed inside for lunch. For once, Ben wasn't worried about the year ahead. In fact, he was looking forward to getting back to his book.
And all this happened after you went to the dentist? Awesome. Uh, hi, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm Brandon. Forget your name there? No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Steven. Welcome to the So-and-So Show! <laughs> Is everything okay, Brandon? Uh, yes. <sighs> was that a question? No. I mean, yes, it was. I mean, I'm fine, is what I'm saying. I just... <sighs> I made a decision earlier that will affect today's show, and now I'm not so confident that it was the right decision. Oh. 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 Okay. Uh, what decision? I invited someone to be our guest today. <laughs> So, what? What's the big deal? Yeah. We have guests all the time. Yeah. Who is it? Is it someone I know? Yeah, yeah, well, it's Joel. The troll. Are you crazy? I know. I might be. Joel the troll? The internet troll? The one who also happens to be a real troll? He's mean, he's vicious, and overall, he's just nasty. I know, but I was thinking maybe he is the way he is because people have been mean, vicious, and nasty to him. Okay. So. <laughs> and you want to what? Be nice to him? Well, yeah, yeah, I feel like I should try. Okay, well, but he's gonna be mean. You know that, right? I... What if he says mean things about you? I'll try not to take it personally. Okay, what if he makes fun of the way you dress? He's entitled to his opinion. What if he insults your cat? He better! Mm. Fluffy never has to know. <gasps> <gasps> there he is. We don't have to do this. We can run, we can hide. Just pretend we're not here, let's turn the lights off. <laughs> no, 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 it's the right thing to do, Steve. Fine. <sighs> Won't you come in? Are you kidding? Ah, you can cut <laughs> with the pleasantries. I've come here to destroy you. What? Hey, Joel! What's up? What's going on? So, Stooge, why am I here? Better make it quick. I've got to get back to making fun of people on the internet. Oh, uh, oh okay. Well, you, you, like, you like games, right? I, I mean, you like, when, when you're on the internet, you play games, don't you? Yes, I like games. Yeah. So what? No, I just thought that maybe it would be fun if, if you and I played a game huh. together. Right, right now. Then let's play. It's time to play Double Down. Here's how you play. I'm gonna put two cards on the wall. There are eight pictures on each card. The first person to buzz in and name the two pictures on each card that match wins the round. Win three rounds, win the game. We know how to play, bearded boy. So let's see the cards. I was telling them in case Nobody they want to play. Cares. Go, 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 go. Now go, just go, go, wait go. a minute. Hey, okay. Steven, Joel, Joel is right. He, he's got a, a busy day ahead, and uh, I think we should get a move on, don't you think? All right. Let's get a move on. Oh, you do have a heart. Don't look, for, don't cheat. Okay, okay. Ready? You have 10 seconds. Okay. Go! Here we go. Uh, uh, Rubik's Cube. Let's see. Kellen. Let's uh, squirrel. Yes, help me out. List everything for me, please. Uh, there's a chicken. Oh, 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 oh! The cantaloupe with a face on it! That is correct! Uh -huh. There are two Count Lupes. <laughs> Take that, booger face. <laughs> you are as disappointing as an unsalted pretzel. Hey! <laughs> you say such funny things. Fine. Round two. You have 10 seconds. Go! Oh. Um, uh. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. The metal detector! Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You are right. Good. That is Leonard's metal detector, Camilla. <laughs> when I think about you later, 
It'll remind me to take out the trash. <gasps> yeah, well, you should take out the trash. So you're welcome. <laughs> well, what are we doing here, buddy boy? We got any more cars to play, or are we just gonna watch your baby teeth fall out? What is that even supposed to mean? Well, uh, three. Who's finish. running this game? You have ten seconds. Go. Uh, um, Oh, oh, oh! The guy with the long beard! Ha! You're wrong! Ha! No, I'm not. Ha! Yes, you aren't! You aren't wrong! <laughs> You're right! That's long beard Carl! <laughs> and you win! Somebody hand me a microphone! We don't have a microphone, Come so. I'm really gonna have some. Oh, ha -ha. I'm gonna name you Mike. Mike, drop! Ah, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I win, I win, I totally win. Woo! Can't say I'm surprised, though. <laughs> Going up against a clown like you. Oh. <laughs> I mean, where's your big red nose? Or your, your big floppy shoes? Uh, mm. You want to take a trip in your tiny little car with your 27 clown friends traveling across Europe? Mm? Going back to Stooge Island? Mm? Mm? Well, you might need me because you know what? You got lost, clown! <laughs> I'm out of here! Hey! Hey! You got something to say to me, B -b bozo? And you? You? You are a meanie, meanie pants. And your your hair? It it, uh, it looks like like blue cotton candy. Huh? And. And you know what? You smell. That's right. You smell like hot dog water. <gasps> oh. Yeah? Well, guess what? I won twice today! I won the game, and I broke you. <laughs> Booey, yeah, baby! Joe the Troll rules! Joe, 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 Joe! Bye, Joel. I couldn't do it. I couldn't be nice for five minutes. <laughs> he was making it really hard. I said some terrible things, Stephen. I'm a terrible person. No, no, don't bite, uh, don't beat yourself up like that, okay? You definitely probably should have definitely not said the things that you did say right there, but that doesn't mean you're a terrible person. No one will ever love me again! Okay, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, we need some help, Kellen. Yeah, I heard. And you know what, Brandon? I've had that exact feeling. You told someone they smelled like hot dog water? Um. No, not that exact feeling, but I have messed up and felt like I didn't deserve to be loved. I'm surprised you're even talking to me right now. I think I have the perfect story for us. Great, then take it away, Kellen. This story comes from the Book of Romans, which was actually a letter written by the Apostle Paul to Jesus' followers in Rome. Now, Paul was writing this. Da, 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 da! Time for Bible sizing with Horvath! Horvath? Yeah! Thank you for having me on your shows. You're welcome. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. Okay, uh, let's do it. I'll read the verses, and you'll... I do exercise! Let's go, now! Uh, wonderful, okay. Here's what Paul wrote. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Stop! First exercise! Okay, I call this the dying and the live insect. First, you bend down and shrivel up like a dying spider after it's been sprayed with raids. Before jumping up and exploding like a firecracker set off by your Uncle Gustav's. <laughs> Why are you not exercising? Oh, um, I thought 
No thinkings! Exercise! My bad. Okay, we do 24 of them. Go! One. Hoodle. Accordion. Ah, 24! Ha <laughs> ha! Carry on with the stories. Oh, yes. So, Paul wrote that nothing can separate us from God's love, not even angels or demons. The present or the future or any powers can separate us. Hold your donkeys! Second exercise. I call this the no angels in the power field exercise. I raise my arms like an angle on the highway to heaven while separating my legs wide into almost splitters before retiring, before retiring, before retiring. Returning them to the original position. <sighs> we do 93 of them. 93? Ready? Go! One. Ah. 42. Ah. Jackalope. Ah. Sister Schubert's. Ah. 93. <laughs> Woo! That really works the muscles above the ankles. Your calves. No! Water break! Ah, ah, refresh these. So, not only can we not be separated from God's love by death or life, there's also no being or supernatural power that can take his love away from us. And Paul went on, not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Stop! Third exercise! I call this highest building, lowest earthworm. You put your handsies over your head and make a little point like a giant skyscraper, and then you just fall down onto the ground and wriggle like an earthworm, baking on the hot pavement. <laughs> Let me see you do the earthworm. Um, huh? I'll pass. Okay, fine, I'll do 60. Ready? One. Uh. Uh. Uh, never mind, I'll do one. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Good idea. And if Paul hadn't been clear enough, he summed it all up with this. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. And if you're wondering what Jesus did for us, he died for us, and he removed that separation completely and permanently. You dance? Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, Final exercise! Okay, you make a little heart shape with your handsies. Before squatting down, we do 500 of these. 500! Go! One. Two. A jillion crinkle fry. Oh. Oh. You okay? I believe my squad are just separated. <laughs> That's okay. I will finish up real quick. Well, hopefully this was clear and helpful, but it all boils down to this. No matter what's going on, no matter how we feel, and no matter what we've done, because of Jesus, nothing can separate us from God's love. You are always loved because God loves you, no matter what. Even if, say, we've called someone a meanie meanie pants and told them they smell like hot dog water? Yep, he still loves you. What if you did something that you weren't supposed to do and you got grounded for seven months? Hypothetically. Seven months? Yeah. Wow, that's bad. But, yeah, God would still love you. What if your muscles seized up like a slinky and you can only move like a crab? God would still love you too. Yes! I'm gonna take Horvath to the chiropractor. He's on my speed dials. Yeah, so, back uh, to you. Thank you, Callan. And Horvath. They're right. I can't let messing up get me down. No, you can't. I've got to have the confidence to try again. Now you're talking. Because the truth is, 
God loves me no matter what. I can't argue with that. So reveal the question. What are some things that are true about God? Yeah, we know it's true that God loves us no matter what. What else is true about God? Uh, he knows everything. And he made the whole universe. Oh, He is amazing. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to try and love people the way God loves me. I need to apologize to Joel. Really? Mm -hmm. He's not going to apologize to you. Yeah, but this isn't about what he does. It's about what I do. And I want to do what's right. Awesome. Thank you. Maybe pick a game that you're better at next yeah, time. That's a good thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's all for today, everybody. We'll see you next week on The So-and-So -so Show. Boom. Boom. It doesn't spin that way. Ah, yeah. Oh, give myself a five. Super flexible. Ah, yeah, good job. Ah. Oh. Ow. The Apostle Paul wrote, Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus our Lord has done. When Jesus died on the cross, it saved you from your sins. And when you believe in Jesus, you could have a relationship with God that lasts forever. And God made all that possible because he loves you. I mean, God loves you here, 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 and here, and here, and up here. God loves you when you're good, when you're not so good, when you feel all alone, and when you're performing on stage in front of a bunch of people, when things don't go the way you expect. Nothing can separate you from God's amazing, never-ending love. And that's the one thing for you to remember today. God loves you no matter what. You are literally surrounded by God's love. So take a minute. Go outside maybe, someplace quiet, and just think about how much God loves you. Hopefully, that will give you a little confidence. I'll see you around.